Spending time away in nature is like hitting a reset button. It gives you time to stop, think and conduct a reality check. This bay wasn't even labelled on a map, but a desire to seek new places uncovered a hidden gem within our own backyard. Adventure is not necessarily arriving at a destination, but discovering and embracing the journey to get there. The definition of adventure is engaging in an unusual and exciting, typically hazardous experience or activity. For me, adventure is an attitude to experience everyday things. Well, good morning. It's Saturday now, third day on the trip. And I tell you what, waking up to this view this morning was just unbelievable. I had the, uh, the canvas open on the tent, sun came through at about 5.30 and uh, just woke up to this view here. It was absolutely perfect. And uh, like I always say, we're just lucky again. The weather again, it's been another perfect day down here. Looking at about uh, low 20s through the day. Clouds are starting to float away now, so we're looking really good. So I reckon the plan today will just be to chill out here for the morning. It's definitely worse places to hang out for a while. And uh, might head off and drive a little bit east. We'll see where we go. I'm not exactly sure where we'll pull up camp tonight, but maybe somewhere near Esperance, just on the, uh, the west side of it. And uh, that will be our last night for the trip. So uh, let's sit back for a while, chill out, have a coffee, get some bacon eggs going, and uh, enjoy the day. So don't get me wrong, I do like my barista made coffee, but there's something about instant coffee while you're camping that I just love. I don't know whether it's that subconscious link my uh, brain's made with good times camping and instant coffee, or whether it's just the simplicity of having something so simple and easy while you're out in the bush to go along with everything else we've got here. But don't miss those barista made coffees. It really doesn't matter what it is. It works out well for me. What I love. So yesterday when we came here to set up, one thing I was taking into account was the tides. Obviously this left side of the beach here is quite narrow, you got the tents right there and then obviously the water right here. So high tide around here is about midnight, early hours of the morning at this time at the moment. So you can see here, the tide got pretty close to camp. So where these footprints are sort of uh, just here sort of got a little bit of water last night and the campsites right there so it's only a few meters away but uh, something you've got to make sure you're aware of make sure you're definitely above that high tide light mark because you don't want all your gear floating away or your uh, car or your tent floating away during the middle of the night but not too bad this time just something to keep in mind if you are setting up on the beach it's a pretty chilled out morning it's what 9 30 at the moment it's nice just to relax have some nice hot brekkie on the uh, on the beach i tell you what definitely gonna be back here so uh, in leaving this morning, we got bogged straight up. 
uh, car just wouldn't come out of where it was parked up but I've got another dedicated video to uh, explain the traction control system on the cruiser or the crawl control system in particular so if you're interested in seeing how we got out of that bog make sure you check that one out that sound was a lot softer than I thought it was going to be and we went straight down as soon as we tried to take off so now we're going to uh, head up out of the track out of this beach here now from all accounts this track can be a little bit hard to get out of it didn't seem too bad coming down yesterday it was uh, fairly hard when it's soft I can imagine it'd be really difficult uh, so we'll be the second car up this track today and uh, we'll try and get some footage of that as we go up uh, we're going to make our way through to Bremer Bay we're going to have to grab some fuel, I haven't fueled up since Meriden and the wheat belt so grab some fuel and then we're going to make our way uh, east sort of towards Esperance seeing uh, where we pull up for uh, camp tonight so uh, let's get a move on right down the right side, probably the most ideal camping spot if you can get it if you're here and no one else is we get this nice fresh water source coming down from this range behind us this is fresh water not salt water so um, with a bit of filtration it will probably be pretty safe to drink how good is it from here nice little area you can just chill out in the hot sun and the beach is right there so that fresh water source just floats straight into there we got all this section here and you see a nice campfire ring there as well if you get here and no one else is here the right hand side of the beach which is the southern section of this little bay it's definitely the place you want to camp so now it's time to see if we can get this cruiser up and out of this track angles justice. A few more pin sites, that's for sure. So what we probably can't see on camera is just how steep this actual section is. It's obviously going to all look flat there, but we are going up that range that we came, we could see from the beach. And uh, it's going up fairly quickly. Not impossible, but just make sure your four-wheel drive set up correctly. You've got the right gear if you do get stuck because uh, I could imagine it would be quite an expensive recovery if you had to uh, pay someone to come out here to get you.
it is an amazing part of the WA South Coast. It really is. It's uh, definitely a place I'll be coming back to later, maybe spending a little bit more time exploring some of the areas. But if you do come out here and if you do go that far, just make sure you've got the right gear. Make sure you've got some communication. Uh, you've got to lower those tire pressures, make sure you have a way of pumping them back up again, and the basic recovery gear. You don't want to be stuck out here and uh, you may be paying someone to come recover you. So uh, we're now at that same section. We lowered the tires uh, down yesterday, so we're gonna do the opposite, chucking it back into two, well, out of four wheel drive and we'll uh, pump these tires back up. So off to Brown Bay to get some fuel. So on the road now, heading out to Mason's Bay from Hopetown, and uh, we've come across this little lookout here. Uh, looks out across the ocean to our right here. So I'll chuck the drone up and have a look for yourself, but I tell you what, the area around here, just this whole south section of WA, from Albany through to Esperance and beyond, is uh, just such a nice place to explore, spend some time. So looking forward to getting Mason Bay and uh, setting up camp there. It should be really nice for the night. So guys, we've made it down to the Mason Bay uh, campsite. So this is just one of those uh, sort of shire regulated campsites, nothing too fancy. I think it's $15 per vehicle uh, per night, so it's not too bad. Um, but the weather sort of came in on us a little bit while we were driving in. It was just a pretty dark, stormy clouds. No rain, unfortunately, but the wind sort of picked up, which meant I couldn't really get any of the drone shots as we came in. Um, I tried, but didn't like it. So I thought, while we're here, and the weather's fine up just a little bit, why not show you around the camp setup that I've got set up today and uh, show you exactly how I camp when I go solo camping by myself. So I've backed the car right up and then uh, sort of put the tent facing backwards towards the beach. And the reason I've done that today, just to sort of act as a little bit of a windbreak. The wind's coming in from that ocean direction and I just want to sort of have a bit of a windbreak from that for the setup that we've got going on today. So it's pretty compact and uh, tight today, but again, it's just solo camping, so you're just by yourself. So I managed to roll out the uh, the awning here for the Oz tent. I don't normally do that, but obviously the weather was just looking a little bit average before as we rolled in. So I thought just in case we get a tiny bit of rain, at least I'll be somewhat prepared. But I'll be taking that down before uh, bed tonight, just to make sure it doesn't flap around in the middle of the night. So when we go in, we get that nice break from the wind. You see here we've got the table set up. Uh, so we've got, just got the uh, the two burner stove here and the gas bottle down on the ground. Now I'm trying out this, which is new to our camping setup. Uh, it's just a promotional bag that was uh, we got given. So it's sort of like a bit of a picnic set, but I've sort of um, taken a few things out, added a few things in. So we've got the fry pans and the cleaning gear, all that sort of stuff in there, and all plates and cutlery on the other side. So, so far it's working quite well. So I might uh, keep that, keep that along with us. So inside the tent here, just being myself, I've got plenty of room. So depending on how I'm camped, depends on the orientation of the mattress and how I'm sleeping, I always try and sleep a head a little bit higher than, uh, than the feet. So in this case, I'm just going head towards the door. Uh, but as you can see, it's a fairly, fairly spacious area, heaps of room for me to still stand up and get changed if I need to or put all my gear there. So I've just got all the covers, for the chairs and the um, tents in there just in case the rain comes in, it's not gonna get wet. Flicking it around, just got the chair set up on the other side here, just out of the wind so it's nice and warm, and then at the back of the car. So having that car backed up nice and close to those bollards, you can still access the fridge. Those bollards actually don't get in the way of this site whatsoever. So later on, I'll grab that esky, which is uh, sort of our um, pantry box at the moment, and put it down next to the uh, table here, and that's where all our dry food's kept. Full access to the fridge, and I've got the pull-out table, which comes up right next to the chair. So I've got a table on either side of the chair, which is kind of handy and helpful. And uh, on top of that, we've got the beach literally just on the other side of the car here. As we walk through here, we've got a vehicle access point just here. And we've also got a walking point just here. So later on, we'll just go for a bit of a walk down the beach, see what's around.
So yeah, guys, our three night camping adventure, the south of WA has now come to a finish. I hope you've enjoyed coming along with me on the, on the journey. I've definitely enjoyed it. Some of the beach camps have been absolutely awesome. And look what, again, we've woken up to this morning. So uh, it's been a great trip. If you have liked it, make sure to leave a comment in the section below. Give me some feedback and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys.